My name is Carl Chiarenza, and I'm a picture maker. So I started photographing in the late 40s. And from that point until 1979, I photographed outdoors. I didn't shoot. I didn't capture. I made pictures. In 1979, uh, the Polaroid Corporation uh, invented a new camera called the 20x24 20 camera. And Polaroid invited a bunch of us over to experiment with it before it went out into the world. And the only time it went out in the world in those days was with Ansel Adams. The rest of us had to bring stuff to the camera. So that's where all this started. I owed all to Polaroid. I didn't know what to bring or how to bring it or make still lives or all that kind of stuff. So for, I don't know, weeks, I wasted a lot of their money and a lot of their film. And two things were wrong. One, I didn't know how to bring things to the camera. And two, the only film they had was color. I realized, one, I didn't make color photographs. And two, I was aggravated and irritated by the fact that I couldn't make something work by bringing something to the camera. And at the end of I don't know how many weeks, uh, I finally got a picture that I thought was interesting. And it was almost entirely blue. I'm a monochromatic person, and I only make monochromatic pictures. But I did learn how to bring stuff to the camera. And I got hooked on that. Well, teaching is uh, uh, teaching art history, uh, first of all, is very good for me because I learned a great deal about art history by learning how to teach it. And then I had um, always had very good students, not all of them, but many of them. And as any good teacher will tell you, you learn a lot from your students. But it, it, it's like this, the way, I, uh, the, the way I taught, the way I like to teach, uh, was not to uh, teach mechanically and have people memorize slides and things like that, but to have discussion, even in a large classroom. But that's the way I'd like to teach, uh, a give and take, back and forth. And I think that is what makes education worthwhile. Uh, when I started making art uh, in the 50s, and on for the next 20 some years, there was no way for a photographer to make a living making art. The art world did not even consider photography as art until the 70s. And even then it was pretty limited. So those of us who were making photographs as art made it because we wanted to. Uh, you could buy an Ansel Adams for 25 bucks when we were making art. And the way Ansel made a living was doing commercial photography, not making art. So the teaching which supported me, um, as, with, as I've said several times, uh, most things in my life happened by accident. And it worked and I'm very grateful. And these days I am reacting um, in interesting ways to the money market. I'm sick and tired of money being what we talk about. I'd like to talk about art. I'd like to make art. It's really obscene. It's really about stocks and bonds. In this case, about putting art in a warehouse and waiting for it to increase in price. It's not about liking the art. Uh, I'm not going to mention any names, but there are certainly a, a hell of a lot of major names that we could talk about who don't even make the art themselves. They have factories to make the art and associate, as celebrities do, with other money people. And the focus is more and more every year in the past 15 or so years that um, it, it's getting to the point where even critics talk about money rather than about art. And I don't think that's right. It's not what art is about. It's not what art should be about, as far as I'm concerned. And one of the problems with doing what I'm doing right now about gifting things and so on is causing me trouble with the dealers uh, because I'm interfering with the possibility of selling stuff. There are several things, I think, contributing to what I'm doing this year, uh, one of which is the um, disappearance of my materials. Uh, Polaroid 
film that I've been using since the late 70s, uh, actually since the late 60s, uh, has been out of uh, availability since 09. I have about 20 boxes left in the refrigerator. When that's gone, and it's already beginning to go, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do because I'm not drawn to digital, not yet anyway. So I think uh, the fact that I know that I'm going to be without film soon and within the last two months they stopped making the paper I used to print on. Uh, so all the signs are that what I use is not going to be available. Um, we all have to figure out what to do next. Uh, in my case, uh, and I don't know exactly how I fell into this, but uh, since I uh, for many years now, I have not thrown prints that I don't like away. It's like, once again, accidental something or other told me not to throw this stuff away. First, I was going to make collages to be photographed out of my old photographs. Uh, and in the process, I decided I liked what was happening as I put pieces of old photographs together. And so I thought I would try uh, just making the collages for themselves. They're still pretty flat so far, which is what they had to be when I was making photographs. You go into the studio and uh, you start playing around with stuff uh, and you're irritated or excited by something that you see happening and you can't explain to anybody why, you can't even explain to yourself why. And then you pursue it. <laughs> 